we're now going to look at conditional statements in Python. And this is where we can ask the computer questions and get a response based on what we input. So hopefully you've completed up to lesson three so far. If you haven't, you need to go back and work on those elements before. Um, before we move on with our Python, let's have a bit of knowledge recall. So four questions that you need to ask and answer into your ePortfolio. So which of the following variables is a valid variable? By valid, we mean something that is allowed. So that's what valid means. So which one of these variables, two day, two hyphen day, or two underscore day, is one that is allowed? And you can add into your ePortfolio why the other ones, the two, would not be allowed. Um, we know what a variable is now. We've covered that in this unit. You need to explain what a variable is in your ePortfolio. And from previous units, you need to explain what bias is. And then when we covered the HTML unit, we looked at these tags here of the B, the U, got text in here, forward slash B and forward slash U. What does this bit of code in HTML, how would that actually be represented in a web page? So you need to explain those four in your work. And then pause the video, complete your knowledge recall and then continue on with our Python lesson. A few things we need to be aware of. We're going to use this equals equals today. That means it's the same as or is equal to. So you need to just be used to writing equals equals. This here means not equal to. Now there's two ways to write not equal. We can do the less than and the greater than symbol, or we can do exclamation equals. Both of them mean not equal to. And here we have our less than, here's our greater than, here's our less than or equal to, and here is our greater than or equal to. So you're going to need to know these mathematical operators as we progress with Python. And we're also going to look at ifs and ifs, and ifs or if, and if not. So we'll look at logical operators to do with if statements or different ways to write an if statement. So more about that later. So you have got a new term today. The new term you're going to understand is indentation. An indentation means like a space, a bit of a gap, like moving, moving something on. And we have a tab key on the keyboard, which is next to letter Q, that will indent text. So if you're writing in Python, you might need to indent. Um, in REPL, some of it will be done automatically for you. So now we know what indentation is. If you see a gap and you're copying that gap, Never use the space bar to create that gap. You could end up with a different amount of space. So you do need to use the tab key for an indentation. OK, let's look at some Python so far. So I'm just going to open up REPL. We're used to using REPL now. And um, you can carry on with that. If you're using Python, that's absolutely fine. It'll still work in Python. It'll just look differently to the way that the information is displayed in REPL. So before I move into REPL, let's look what it looks like in Python. We're going to have an answer being an input. Do you like Python coding? We're going to get the person to respond with a Y or an N, a yes or a no. So Y or N is what we want the answer to be when we run our program. Now we can look through our code here. If the answer is a Y or the answer is a capital Y, we're going to get the computer to print great news. You're on your way to being a computer scientist. Elif. Now this stands for else if. So else if the answer is a N or a capital N, it's going to say I'm shocked. And if somebody enters something that's not the Y's or not the N's, it's then going to say an else statement. So it's going to say whatever they put in. I can only assume that means you really love Python. So I'm just going to bring REPL here. I've written the code already and I'm just going to run it. And straight away I get an error. Um, line two, if answer equals equals Y or answer equals equals capital Y. Sorry, it took me a little while to spot the error. I've put an extra bracket in here. I'm just going to take that bracket out. Now when I run my code, hopefully I don't get a syntax error. As I've said before, there's nothing wrong with getting syntax errors. We just need to find out what was wrong. But I'm going to run that again. I'll put this um, bracket back in to stop that and run that code. There was a little clue. And it did say that there was an error on line 2. So I looked at line 2. 
if answer equals equals y or answer equals equals y and it's actually put a little marker in for that that bracket and it's saying unmatched bracket so i'm just gonna take that bracket out and click run there we go so do i like python coding i'm gonna put a y in and press enter and it's looked to my answer being a Y and put in great news, you're on your way to being a computer scientist. I'm gonna run that again. Do you like Python coding? I'm gonna put an N in. I do find Python coding quite frustrating at times. Press enter and I get the, for the N, oh, I'm shocked. And again, if I run it and this time I put something random in and press enter, I then get my third message. So depending what you put in on the input, you'll get different answers on your output. So uh, that's what an if statement is, or an if and an elif does in Python. So moving on with that, we're now gonna look at something called casting variables. So casting means that you're changing a variable from its data type. So I can enter it as a string and then convert it, or cast it to be an integer. And sometimes we need input to be able to be numbers so we can work out what's going on. So if we look at this blue box here, 23 is not the same as this 23 because this one is in speech marks, which means it's string, some words, whereas 23 here is not in the speech marks, so it's a number 23. So we just need to be aware that we can change the data type in Python. So what I've got now is two integers. We've got number one is an input, number two is an input. If number one, we're here, we're changing into an integer, a whole number. So number one, integer number one. So it's converting, it's casting it as an integer, a whole number. And now we're saying if number one is greater than number two, so bigger than, if number one is bigger than number two, we're gonna print your first number was bigger. L if, so else if number one is smaller than number two, we're gonna say your second number was biggest. And then if we have anything other than that, it has to be that both numbers are the same, we're gonna print that both numbers are the same. Okay, now we're gonna look at the next one. And what we've got here is, you might remember back in primary school that uh, girls always said that all boys smell and boys always said that all girls were evil. So we're gonna base it on primary school playground behavior. And what we're gonna add in here is an if statement. So we're gonna add on to what we've already had in your ePortfolios. You've already got this bit of code, you can add on to that. And if we look at my REPL, what I'm just going to do is remove the first bit of code and I've pre-written this already and my code won't work and won't run at the moment because what I've done is I've put in these hashtags. Now hashtags just make the words comments and not part of the code. So I'm now just taking out the hashtags so you can see what's going on. So when I type this, let's just put a couple spaces in here. As soon as I'm on this line with a colon and press enter, the computer automatically indents the text to where I need it to be. But sometimes we need to change that indentation. So this is what this line is representing. In fact, there's an indentation there. I'll just take that one out. So I'm gonna run this. I've got my variables and I'll input for the variable, so I'm gonna ask a name, ask an age, and ask a gender. And then it's gonna print, hello, whoever that person's name is, what have you entered? You look pretty good for however old they are, for whatever age, boy or girl, or male or female. Now if the person has put in male, or lowercase male, it's then gonna say, but all boys smell. If they put in female or female, it's gonna then say, but all girls are evil. Otherwise, it's gonna say, just ask a question, is that a species of dragon? So let's try running this. 
I've got a syntax error again. Again, for some reason, on line 11, I've put a uh, bracket in again. You should have been able to spot what that error was. And now I've got another error. We'll see what happens when I run it. What is your name? So I'm just going to put in Mr. Lucas. What is your age? I'm going to be 102. What is your gender? I'm going to put in male. And then when I press enter, it says, hello, Mr. Lucas. You look pretty good for a 102 year old male, but all boys smell. So it's written it and produced exactly what I'd expect. So let's run it again. I'm just going to put, um, just put in, I'll pretend to be my wife, Mrs. Lucas. What is your age? 102. What is your gender? And we've put in female this time. And we get a traceback error this time. So if gender equals male or answer equals male, so if gender equals male or answer equals male, the reason this should be is I need the same variable that we're looking for, gender equals male or if gender equals female or gender equals female it's going to print what I need it to be so again let's just run it this is Lucas age 102 gender female now it works as expected so again, if you're getting errors in your code, I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to just end it there. I want you to then try and work out why you're getting an error and fix your errors. There's nothing wrong with getting errors in Python code. There'll be a little indication. You look at what line number's wrong, and then you can just try and work out exactly what's wrong with your error code. So that's good so far. Uh, and that was task 16. So task 17 is a number game and they're asking you, I'm not going to give you the answer for this one, but they're asking to get you to put in a number and see if you can guess. So have a number written in there, put a guess in, see if they can guess a number between 1 and 100. And I want you to put in the code that if the number equals the number so that you've saved, then it's correct. Or you can say whether it's too high or too low. So there's a little bit of a challenge there in task 17 that I'm not going to give you the answer. I'll talk more about that next week in um, the next lesson, see how you got that bit correct. So a little extension. You've got a few plenary questions. If you can answer these in your e-portfolio, some of them you're going to see before and look familiar. So what is an algorithm you should be able to explain? And now you should be able to explain what, what does CAS mean? So you can look through these nine questions and solve those and um, complete the work in your e-portfolio and submit it to your teacher.